All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month we come out with new exercises for you to practice your skills and complete, and we break it down for you into four different sections. So today we are going to be working in the October warm-ups section. At the top here is a little animated video to tell you what's going on in Craig's world that month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive quiz that relates to the video up above. And then all the way at the bottom are all of the exercises within this section. So today we are going to finish up the warm up section with processing the bank fee transactions. You will need to be in the same session of the sample company that you used for the previous exercises in this section. If you have not completed those yet, go ahead and click on the link on the top right corner of your screen. That'll take you to the first exercise in the warm up section. Complete that one and all the ones following until you get back to this one. So our scenario today is that after you have input all the sales and expense transactions, it's time to process bank fees. This means comparing what went into and out of the bank and making sure that there is a correct record of it in QBO. So let's start by processing the new transactions in the checking accounts. To get there in the left hand nav bar, we need to hover over transactions and then select bank transactions. So let's do that. Um, here I am in the sample company. This is the last page that I left off of from the previous exercise. That's why it looks this way. Um, from this page, there's several different ways we can do it. One, we can click on this bank transactions. There is also a bookmark that they already have for you for bank transactions here. Or we could do what the um, exercise says, which we're going to go ahead and do. You're going to hover over transactions and then select bank transactions. So lots of different ways that you can get to the page that you need. Um, and this is the way that we are going to do it with um, based off of the exercise. If you get a little pop up here, just go ahead and click out of it. It's just QBO trying to be extra helpful and give you a little overview of what you are about to do in the bank transaction feeds. So let's take a look first at what uh, bank transactions QBO thinks is a match, um, is a potential match for each transaction. So to do this in the all transactions field, we're going to click on the down arrow and then select potential match. So down here, um, you see this all transactions, click on that arrow and then select potential match. And all the potential matches will show up here in the bank feed. You'll notice that there are some transactions that have multiple matches. So let's take a quicker look at these, starting with the one for Pam sites. In the action column on her row for Pam sites, we're going to click on view. And the way you can tell if there's multiple matches that they're finding, this one says one match found. This says two matches found. You see what for Pam, books by Bessie, squeaky clean. We'll address all of those uh, momentarily, but let's just start with the one for Pam sites. Go ahead and click on the blue view button and you will see an expanded version of all of the information. And you see that there are two different ones that are QBO is trying to match here. Now, when QBO is trying to match transactions um, in the bank feed, they look at the amount, not the description or the payee. So it doesn't really know which one to choose. Um, when you look at the options, however, we could see that the bank description matches the expense recorded for PAM sites. Um, so this is why you need humans. It's not, I can all be done, um, all, um, uh, with, um, computers and such. So we're going to make sure that we have selected the one for Pam sites and then click on match. So as you see here, there's two different ones that the amount that it's searching for, for $75, the bank detail says Pam sites, this expense 76 says for Pam sites. So that's the one that we want selected, um, which it is. And now we could click on the green match button and that match has now been um, completed. Now you'll notice that when we match the PAM sites transaction, it also took care of the Books by Bessie transaction. And that's because QBO recognizes that there's only one for Books by Bessie um, for that $75, and so it has made that match. 
So here's that one for Books by Bessie. A moment ago, it said two matches found because, again, it was trying to figure out if that one was the one for Pam Sites or the one from Books by Bessie because they were both $75. Remember, QBO only searches by amount, not description. So now that we um, matched the one for Pam, it has now matched the one for Books by Bessie. So let's look at the squeaky clean car wash transaction the same way that we handle the one for Pam sites. We're going to click on the view uh, link right next to on the same um, line as the squeaky clean car wash row. So here is squeaky clean car wash. Here is the view um, link. Go ahead and click on that. And now you have an expanded version of this. You'll notice that there are two transactions at QBO that potentially match the transaction. One is a cash expense. Um, Craig previously told you that the credit card uh, reader uh, frequently goes out and they had to pay with cash. So was this spent from the petty cash account? Was it something that was paid for by Craig personally and he should be reimbursed? Either way, you need to make note of it just to talk to him about it later to see what's going on. For now, we're going to match the debit expense, which has the correct date and is automatically selected. So if we look here, you see um, these are both the exact same vendor, exact same amount. So the way to decipher which one is for which, you could see the date that is up here in your bank feed matches one of these. For me, um, I have it as September 9th. Your dates will be different. The sample company is always changing their dates. Um, so whenever you're doing this exercise or watching this video, it will be different. Um, but whatever the date down here that matches this one is the one that you want selected, which is this check debit. So it is selected. And now we can go ahead and click on the green match button. And now that match has been completed. So now let's take a look at the one for Tanya's nursery. On the Tanya nursery line, um, again, in that action column, we're going to click on view. So let's scroll down and see where we can find Tanya. For me, it's towards the bottom. It says two matches found. If you click on view, you will see that there are two different ones appearing. And if you look closely, this one says 10809, this one says 10809, and they're a day apart. Um, remember, this is the old receipt that Craig had found and entered in the system. So it looks like it was already entered. And of course, if you were the one that had found the receipt, you probably would have checked that. Craig was the one that had jumped the gun here and went ahead and entered it. So at this point, all we need to do is, is void the one that we had entered. So to do this, we're going to click on expense which is the one for down here, it's the bottom one, not expense 15, but the one that just says expense. So click on that one and we will see the expense that we had added in here. In the memo field, we want to um, make a note of what this is. So we're going to type in duplicate uh, transaction. So that is down here on the bottom where it's under the item uh, details. If it collapses, you'll see it a little bit more. Um, the memo, we're just going to write duplicate transaction. Oops, transaction, there we go. And then in the black bar, we're going to click on more and then select void. So let's do that. Um, in the middle here, there's this more, click on that. And we want void. I know it, even though this is a duplicate, you may be tempted to do uh, delete, but just so you know, the difference between void and delete, it's basically the same thing, except void is um, still going to be in the QBO system. It's not going to be a part of your, your, um, your, uh, accounts in any, uh, like it's not going to show the amount. Um, it's, it's zeroing it out. But if you ever need to go in the audit history and see um, this transaction for whatever reason, if you click void, you'll be able to do that. If you delete it, it means that it's completely out of the QBO um, account. So I um, highly suggest doing void just in case for whatever reason you ever need to go back to it. So just go ahead and click on void. And it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to void this? And we want to say yes and then click OK. So select yes, that's the white button, and then you can click on OK. And now that one has been voided. So um, if we look down here at the one for Tanya's nursery, we'll see that it has been resolved and that we only have single matches left on the list. So let's just scroll down to make sure that that happened. Here is the one for Tanya's nursery, the one that we just did. It says one match found, so we are good to go.
So now we just need to go ahead and match all of the ones here because it's just showing at this point one match for each one. To do that in bulk, all you have to do is just click on the checkbox on the top of the column. And then when the black bar appears, you just click on accept. So you can double check here that these are all just one match found. You'll see just like the green box in all of those, and that looks good. So click on this arrow or this checkbox right here. It'll select all of the transactions for you and then select accept. And now all of those transactions have been matched. So when all the match uh, transactions have been accepted, we'll be notified that there are no more transactions to match our search. So we just need to remove the filter, the potential match filter to see all the other ones that are unmatched. So to do that, we're gonna click on the X um, next to potential match to remove the filter. So that's right here, click on the X. And now you will see that you have five transactions left, one for Books by Bessie, three for A Rental, and then one for Hicks Hardware. So you call Craig to ask about the Books by Bessie transaction. The last time that he was there, Craig noticed that one of the trees along the fence had a broken tree branch and was leaning on the fence. Craig told her he could remove it for her for forty or $55, and she told him to go ahead and take care of it. She had sent the money without waiting for an invoice, and Craig had forgotten to report it. You cannot add sales transactions to a vendor account because Books by Bessie is a vendor. She's set up as a vendor right now in in his, um, in QBO. Um, so if a vendor becomes a customer, a new customer account needs to be set up. Since there is no invoice involved, we're just gonna use a sales receipt to record the payment for that trimming. So we're going to click on the plus new button and then select sales receipts. Top left corner, uh, click on plus new. Under customers, you're going to find sales receipt, click on that and you will see the sales receipt transaction form appear. We're going to click on the down arrow and then select plus add new because even though Books by Bessie is already set up as a vendor, when she buys services from Craig, she becomes a customer. So we need to establish a customer account. So click on the little arrow here under customer and then click on the plus add new and you will see this appear for us. So we're going to, in the customer display name field, type in books by Bessie, parentheses, C, parentheses. And that C is indicating um, that it is the customer account, the books by Bessie customer account versus books by Bessie vendor account. QBO will not allow you to have a vendor and a customer have the exact same name. So just having it slightly different and doing it this way, it will help. Um, you'll not only be able to enter it, but it's easy to discern which one's the customer account and which one's the vendor account. So let's go ahead and put that in the customer display name, type in books by Bessie parentheses C parentheses so that it shows as the customer account. And then you can click on the green save button down here. And now the books by Bessie customer account has been um, created. So let's go ahead and finish the uh, rest of the form. We're going to change the date of the sales receipt to today because the last time we entered a date, it was for two months ago. It was the old Tanya's transaction. So that's still showing in the field, as you can see right here. Um, technically, the date should match the date of the Books by Bexie transaction, um, but since the dates in the sample company are always changing, we can just use today for today's purposes, um, for the purposes of this exercise. So go ahead and change this here to today. Um, a little fancy way to do it is if you type in a lowercase t, it'll automatically take you to today's date. In the deposit to field, we are going to select checking. Remember, this has already gone through the bank, and so that's why we just need to go ahead and select checking. So click into the deposit to field, and then you can select checking. In the product service field, this is for the trimming. So landscape trimming is what we need there. So click into it two times. If you start typing in trimming, you will see it will come up for you, that landscaping, that parent landscaping account, and then the sub account trimming is right there. We're gonna go ahead and type the rate to $55 because that is what he told her it was going to cost. So in the rate field, highlight over it, delete it, and then put 55. If you tab over, you will see that QBO will update that for you. And then we're simply just going to save and close this sales receipt. 
So click on the arrow down here on the bottom right corner, uh, select save and close. And that sales receipt has now been saved. Now, after we have done that, if you take a look at the bank feed, you will see now that the ones for books by Bessie is showing that one match. And that is because we created that sales receipt. So we can go ahead and click on the blue match button because um, it has now been matched properly. And now we just have the four transactions left to look at. You don't know anything about the A trans, um, the A rental transactions, excuse me. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just set them aside to ask Craig about that later. Since we'll be uh, working on several accounts, we're just gonna put all of them in one category so it's easily easy to quickly pull them up um, when you talk to him. So click on the check boxes next to all three of the ones for A rental, and then we're going to click on the black update button. So A rental right here, click on the check boxes next to each of those on this side, um, and then you're going to click on the update button, and this will appear for you. In the category dropdown, we're going to click on the plus add new. So click into it and then click plus add new, and this is going to appear for you. Even though this account will be used for both income and expense transactions, we'll create it as an other expense account so that it appears um, at the bottom of reports and it's easy to find. So um, in the account type field, we're going to select other expense. So account type, um, scroll down until you get to other expense. It's the very bottom. The detail type field is going to be other miscellaneous expense. Click into that and you will see as you scroll down, there it is, other miscellaneous expense. The name for this is going to be to be categorized. So if you um, go into that field, delete what is there and then type in to be categorized. There we go. Had a moment of not being able to spell that uh, to be categorized and then you can just go ahead and click on the save and close button it's the green button down here click on that and now that category has been saved for us we're just going to apply and accept and again the reason that we do this is so that all of those transactions are grouped together so that you can easily bring it all up and talk to craig at the same or talk to when you talk to craig all of that can be pulled up at the exact same time so click on the green apply and accept button. And now those uh, three transactions have been categorized in that, that um, category to be categorized um, uh, account that we just created. So there's one left. The last transaction on there is for Hicks Hardware. You recall entering a transaction for Hicks Hardware for the same amount, that 2438. That will um, that was the split expense that we did for Craig when he bought um, the light bulbs. So why isn't it matching? Let's take a closer look. We're gonna click on the transaction and then click on find match. So just click anywhere on the transaction there. And then there is this button next to find match. Go ahead and click on that. And now anything from Hicks Hardware that could potentially be a match is showing up here on this list. Um, while there is a transaction listed for Hicks Hardware, it's off by two cents. It looks very, very similar, but it's um, not necessarily the same transaction. So let's look at this in a different way. We're gonna click on the cancel to get out of this. So you can go ahead and actually click on the little X on the top right corner here so that we can get out of that page. And then we're going to click on the magnifying glass on the top right corner of the, um, of the screen and then we're gonna click on advanced search. So if you click up here, you see this little magnifying glass on the type, top right corner of the screen, click on that. And then you see something here that says advanced search, go ahead and click on that and it's showing all of the recent transactions that we have done. Without any further filtering, we can immediately see the Hicks hardware transaction that we entered earlier today. That was the one that we did on a previous exercise. So why isn't it matching? Let's take a closer look. We're going to click on the Hicks hardware transaction to see what's going on. 
So if you scroll down a little bit, you see this expense for Hicks Hardware, $24.38. Go ahead and click into that to see that expense appear for us. Again, this is the one that we entered at a previous um, on the previous um, exercise. So upon closer inspection, you see that the payment account says Visa, which is the Visa credit card, but you have been processing processing the bank fees for the checking account. The receipt said Visa on it, but what you didn't realize at the time was that this was the Visa check card. It's, it's the debit card. Um, it happens to be a Visa. So we need to change the payment account to checking because right now it says Visa, meaning the Visa card, credit card, not the Visa debit card. So we're gonna click into this and change this to checking right there. You may also be having an issue with the date. Again, the dates in the sample company are always changing, so it's difficult to get this exactly right. QBO will only look for a match about 10 days after the date of the bank feed. Um, so you wouldn't do this in a real life scenario, but for the purposes of this exercise, because of the sample company changing the dates, we're going to change the date to a month earlier. Um, so you want to go ahead and click into this. If you don't remember how to do it, um, we're gonna do it together right here. Click on the little calendar, click on the left arrow, and then just go ahead and change it to the same date just a month earlier. And now we're simply going to save and close this. So the green button down here, save and close. And you will see that expense has now been saved for us and updated. So let's go back to the bank fees to see how that changes it. From the left nav bar, we're going to hover over transactions and then click on bank transactions. So again, over here on the left hand side, hover over transactions and then select bank transactions. It's also bookmarked. You can always click on that as well. And as you can see, now it is showing as a match. This one match has been found for Hicks Hardware, which is great. And so now we can go ahead and click on the blue match button. And look, you will see that this account has been completely matched. We are done with the checking account, which is great. So now we're going to move on to the savings account. To get there, we need to just click on the savings tile on the top. So here we are in the checking, um, it's blue, so that's how you know it's selected in that one. We're gonna click on the savings tile right here. And now it is just showing one transaction, which happens to be a match in the savings account. So we're going to go ahead and click on the match button because that one is um, uh, showing up as a match. Um, so click on the, uh, the blue match button. And now that account has been um, processed. All of the bank feed for that one is all done. Now we need to look at the MasterCard. So we're gonna click on the MasterCard tile. If for whatever reason you're not seeing it here on your screen, you may have to, uh, There's a there would be a little button to scroll either way to find it. Um, it's showing up on my screen right here. So I'm gonna click on the MasterCard tile and see all of the transactions within this, um, within the MasterCard. So next to each transaction where there's a one match found, we're gonna click on the checkbox and then accept and click on accept. So there's three different ones that say one match found. Click on the checkbox next to each one. And then you will click, you will see three are selected. You can click on the um, accept button. And now you should only have four left. Squeaky Clean has two transactions for the exact same amount. We can infer that they are two different car washes for two different dates. On the right hand side of the first Squeaky Clean transaction, we're going to click on view. And then for the um, record that's matching the date, we're gonna click on the circle and then select match. So over here, the first one that's on this line, click on the blue view button. You see a little more information is appearing. Um, this date right here matches this date here. So I'm going to click on the um, button next to it. Um, make sure that whatever date is matching here matches the one that you select for me. It's this second one. Um, so I'm going to hit that little radio button next to it and then click on the um, green match button. And now you will see that the other one is showing as a match because we matched the first one. And so it's um, found the uh, second one as a match as well. So we're going to go ahead and click on the match button there. Click on that blue match button. And now we just have the two transactions remaining. 
You'll need to ask Craig about those final two transactions, but he's already left for the day. So we're going to categorize these in that to be categorized account that we created earlier until we can ask him about it at another time. So we're going to click on the checkbox at the top to select both of the transactions and then click on update. So um, there is a, a the button on top of that one. You're going to click on that and then click on update here. And then in the um, category field, we're going to change it to to be categorized and then click on ex apply and accept. So here you're going to click on this arrow um, or you can click into it and start typing in to be, and there it is, to be categorized. Click on that and then go ahead and click on the green apply and accept. And now it's showing that this account, ha this account has also processed um, as well. You can always tell if they are all up to date and um, all of the bank feeds are processed properly and completed by the little green check marks on each tile. So you are done. You have processed the bank feeds for the checking the savings account as well as the MasterCard. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO Gym, just go ahead and click on the link below in the description. We have finished the warm-up section. We move to the cardio section now with our next exercise where we practice invoicing delayed charges. And I will see you in the next video.